So, today we're going to take what's in here. It's a Core i5-4670 and, you know, all the fixings. And we're going to take this little Dell pre-built and see if we can't move it into here. This is an Antec MX400 and I know the motherboard and everything will fit in there but we're going to need some extra stuff because Dell never makes it easy. We're going to use an 8 pin adapter from a 24 pin to 8 pin and see if we can't make it work. Everything else should go. Uh, we'll find out as we go but yeah might as well. I don't know how difficult this case is going to be to work in. We did take a quick look at it uh, in a previous video about budget cases or budgeting for a case, but we're going to see if I can get this into here today. So there's really only a couple of reasons you would actually ever do this. Say that uh, your case, you've got a Dell case that's messed up and you're trying to salvage the motherboard and the internal stuff that's in it and you're trying to use it that way. Uh, that would be one thing. Uh, in my case, uh, no pun intended, I'm looking at a situation where I can't add any more storage and I might like to, or the video card. I'd have to get a low profile video card. I do have one, but it's older. Uh, it's not very, not very good. And to get something a little bit newer or better, I would have to get a full size and it's easier to get that to put in a better case. Now, it's not, it's not a great idea. It can be done. It's not a great idea, though. And Dell does make it difficult because it has a number of things like the fan, the temperature sensor, the power uh, cables and all that. Even the power switch is a little bit different, and it's a little bit different configuration. Dell tends to make their power switch. You know, how a lot of times when you're plugging into a motherboard, all your front panel stuff goes in one little area, one little set of connectors. Well, Dell kind of splits that up. One of them is the power stuff, and it's a five pin instead of two pins. And then the rest of the stuff is kind of separated. It does make it more difficult. Uh, they also have, Dell usually has a temperature sensor, or they have a case fan that has to be plugged in. It, it, you can still run the computer, but you tend to get this message that a number of things are missing. A front I.O. has an issue or a, a fan is not connected, whatever the deal is that pops up before you doesn't go it doesn't go straight to power on to windows or your operating system it always has a step in between letting you know that there's errors and it's not expected so that's what i'm going to try to get rid of and one of those things that that i'm going to have to do with this also is use this adapter cable uh, this is a 24 pin to 8 pin uh, for they're, they make a 24 by 6 and a 24 by 8. This Dell happens to need the 24 by 8 pin. It has a DC to DC converter in the middle. I believe that's 5 pin to uh, 5 volt to 12 volt. And there's a couple things going to have to do with jumpers to try to get rid of some of those messages. I don't know if I'll be able to or not, but we're going to find out. And this is where I use that adapter from the, I believe it's 20 pin down to the 8 pin. Comes in right there. Uh, nothing I can do about the colors of the wire. And there's not really anything I can do about the colors of the, those wires there either. I had to use the same cooler because uh, it's a different type of plug. And so I would have had to go back and redo uh, a lot more than I wanted to. But uh, we're going to go ahead and put a graphics card in here and fire her up. Um, no, that's not the best looking either. But it's a small, awkward size motherboard in a little bit bigger case so that's what I'm stuck with I, I'm not gonna leave it like this I'm gonna test it and make sure it works but uh, this case and everything is actually gonna go for another build that I'm gonna do for a friend and uh, he's got something else in mind so I'll probably end up using this case for other stuff and something inter interesting they did here the top two uh, you can unscrew them but all the rest of them are you have to break them out they're breakout tabs so uh, I guess it's a cost saving thing, but usually it's the second and third ones that are coming out for your video card. So 
Yeah, I don't know about that one. So it's not my best cable ma management on the back side, but it's not exactly horrible. I think I can live with it. All right, we've got it wired all up, got the video card in. That's not my favorite either. And also don't like how the, that's tucked in there, so I'll have to do something about that. Or maybe I won't because like I said, I'm gonna be reusing this for something else pretty quickly. So let's give her a shot. I've already turned the power supply on. Maybe I haven't. Of course I haven't. Ooh, now I have. Oh, now that actually, that was all right. So I did finally get it to come up and evidently um, I was under the impression that I had to short those pins up in there, the bottom part, uh, pins two and uh, one and four, I think it is. Um, that would stop me from getting this F1 because of the uh, the power button failure. <sighs> well, that didn't work. So I will try something else. But for the time being, she is up, she is running. So I'm going to do a few tests, check the temps, and see what happens. All right, so the main thing I'm concerned with here is, is just the temperatures. And I'm going to be looking at the CPU temp and the GPU temp. And right now... All the covers are off so I'm gonna turn it off button it up put the covers on and then we're gonna see first of all these are looking pretty decent between 34 uh, 32 to yeah 32 on the GPU up to about 40 37 to 40 on the CPU and we're gonna see if that changes when we put the covers on and then we're also gonna run you know a couple of tests to see if they stay that way all right, so we're most of the way through the test here. As you can see, the, the GPU is climbing up there around 73 or so, but the GPU is not part of the original Dell. That was a 1660 that I put in. The CPU is hanging around 50, 51, 52. You know, it might get up around 53, 54 once in a while, but it usually comes back down just a tad bit. And it's not looking too horrible. So um, the next one I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do Cinebench just to stress the CPU out to see what it does. But, um, yeah, it's not looking too bad. It, it's looking, quite honestly, very similar to it did when I had it in the original Dell case. Now, I thought about running this thing on a 10-minute loop, but as you can tell, it's already been going for a while. Um, actually, it might be on a 10-minute loop, but temps, not too bad. CPU is about 66. Uh, it's been out to around 66, 68. Um, it hasn't been, as you can see, where the maximum over there on the third column says 68, so it's not horrible, and uh, it's running okay. Now, does that mean I would do this all the time? No, and we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Not a great score by any means, but got to remember, it's a four-core, four-thread, and uh, we got up to 68 degrees, so it wasn't horrible. So is this a good idea? If you're just doing it because you want to do it or just a project, it can be dumb, but it's not the easiest thing to do. And it's not really the most practical. Uh, probably your best bet is even in a case like this or even a, in a circumstance like this, maybe just find another Dell case, a bigger Dell case. That would probably solve my problem a lot better than trying to move this into a custom case. I, I should be able to find, you know, even if it's a, an older Dell, that I can pull the stuff that doesn't work anymore out and put this that I know is a good working computer in that might solve some of my issues uh, I, I don't know we'll, we'll have to we'll have to play around with this uh, now what I did go back and do is I <laughs> right after I got done with all this I went back and I put the Dell back together because I'm going to need that case for my friend Ben's computer that we're going to go ahead and build for him next uh, that will be probably the next thing up, but this is probably the shortest lived project I've had because right after I got done or about the time I was finishing up, I was talking to him and we were talking about building his computer and I'm going to need that case. So um, I was able to get the Dell back together and working and not a problem at all. It, it went together uh, just the way it came apart. I do have to give it to him for the way things are put together, that they there's only one way they're going to go back. Okay, so uh, you take it apart, there's only one way it can go back, and it still works, and I don't want to say indestructible, something, something can always go wrong, but in this case it worked out. 
So unless you have a problem with the case itself, the case is busted or you're missing stuff or something happens where you have to change into a different case than the Dell case that you have, I, I probably wouldn't recommend this. Uh, one of the things I also had to do was the IO shield on the back. I had to take, um, I had to sort of, I don't want to say manufacture my own, but I had to use part of what was on in the inside of the Dell case. There was like a little... A heat shield type it wasn't metal it was more of a i don't want to say asbestos because that's that's not good but it was almost like a little uh padded you know heat proof thing uh a little bit sturdier construction than than cardboard but it was sort of a cloth type material and so i had to try to fashion something out of that that didn't work too well either so um overall i i this is far from a fail because i did get it to work but it's not something practical and it's obviously not going to stay that way and the use i was going to have for it i thought maybe i'd turn it into my server eventually but i don't have the hard drive space in there to be able to do that with this case anyway and now i need the case so uh overall yeah it does work should you do it probably not but you can um it will take a little bit of patience some of that troubleshooting stuff on the front io I, I wasn't able to get rid of because I wasn't able to uh, I wasn't able to fix those pins for the front power connector right. Yeah, I could probably if I splice it out of the old case, but I didn't want to tear up the stuff in the old case because obviously I was going to put it back. So anyway, uh, that's all I got for right now. If you liked the video or found it helpful in any way or whatever, go ahead and throw a like on it. I appreciate that. If you're not already subscribed, please do. That would be amazing. And uh, I got other videos coming. I'm going to try to do them a little bit more often than once a week. I've been, it's not really been lazy. I've been productive. I've been trying to work on something that I'm not ready to disclose yet. It doesn't have anything to do with the channel, but I will share it with the channel. But in the meantime, I have been really, really busy, and um, it'll be worth it. Well, it, it. well, it'll be worth it. But that is all I have for this time, so don't forget to do all that YouTube stuff and visit me on the other socials and all that. And until the next video, I'll see you later.